Others are well conducted on the learning outcomes of the children, but not on child quality indicators. And others have been conducted on community-led ECE. I mean, others have been uh, conducted on school quality, but not on community-led uh, ECE centers. Now, it now gave me chance to actually go to Karamoja and find out about the caregiver, child, and ECE center quality uh, indicators that ensures sustainability at the community level. Now, the purpose of the study was to establish the quality indicators that ensure sustainable early child education programs from a community perspective. Objectives of the study, the study actually was guided by three objectives. The first objective was to assess the caregivers' ECE quality indicators that ensure sustainable program programming from a community perspective. The second one was ex to explore the expected child ECE quality indicators that ensure sustainable programming from a community perspective. And the third one was to establish ECE side quality indicators that ensure sustainable programming from a community perspective scope of the study. Content was looking at the two variables, quality indicators and sustainable early child education, and then the other one is from a community perspective. Geographical this study was done in five districts in Karamoja. And that is that way the that's where the districts that I, I carried out today study from Mudant, Napok, Lakapiripirit, Kotido, and Moroto. Scope uh, the time scope was actually 2015 up to 2019. Now, the study was guided by the two theories. The first theory is called the social capital theory, and then the other one is called the strength model theory. The social capital theory is actually talking about individuals being embedded in a network of social relations, social relations that influence decisions and actions. Now, looking, in, looking at Karamoja, we all know that Karamoja people stay in social networks. They live together in their manyatas and so on. And it's on record that one of the biggest villages in East Africa is found in Karamoja region. That is in Kotudo, a place called Napilimoru. So for the purpose of this study, we actually need to use or to to, to, to build on sustainable programs from anchoring them on community systems that build on trust. Now, for us to integrate early childhood education programs in Karmoja, we need to, to integrate those programs into the social networks that are already available in their communities. The second theory, like I said, is the strength model theory. And this one believes that it is only the people who are affected by their problem, who are at a better position to give solutions to their problems. So that is what that theory is talking about. So if we want to sustain ECE interventions in Karamoja, we need to engage the communities to actually give us the solutions to the problems because they are the experts in it. Now, the study reviewed literature from different parts of the world, but um, this literature actually had a lot of gaps. The literature was done according to the three objectives, and the first objective was looking at the caregiver ECE quality indicators. And the gap that I found here is that when I read literature, I realized that there's a lot of literature talking about the uh, European perspective, but not actually talking about the indigenous communities. The second objective was looking at expected child ECE quality indicators. And the quality indicators that were presented in this literature were actually talking about more of schooling quality indicators, for example, proficiency in English, IT, ICT skills, and so on. But these indicators are not speaking of what is expected of a good child after graduating from an ECE center. The third objective was looking at the ECE site uh, quality indicators. Again, there was a gap in this objective in that the literature presented the quality indicators from a, a modern ECE site. For example, 
they, they want an ECE site to be having fire extinguishers, smoke detectors, ICT lab, and so and, and so forth. But these indicators were not talking about the ECE site quality indicators from an indigenous community. Now, after reviewing the literature, I came up now with these three questions. The first question is actually talking about what quality indicators in the perspective of the communities must caregivers possess if ECE programs are to be sustained in Karamoja. And the second one was looking at which quality indicators in the perspective of the communities must children attain who attend ECE programs possess if such programs are, be, are to be sustained in Karamoja. And the third one was looking at what quality indicators in the perspective of the communities must ECE sites possess if ECE programs are to be sustained in Karamoja. Well, this study was guided by a philosophical stand. And to do this study, I used the interpretivist, epistemological interpretivist worldview belief that believes in subjective reality, not objective. So this study helped me. Why I chose this is because I needed to be very flexible when analyzing data, and I needed to accommodate the divergent views and perspectives people were giving me as far as sustaining ECE is concerned at a, commun as at a community level. The methods that I use for collecting data, well, the approach I use for this study is called the qualitative research approach, which helped me to explore the meaning people had towards the social problem that I was actually investigating. And then I used the phenomenology research design, which actually helped me to explore the, phenom the phenomenon that I was studying, and that was the ECE sustainability uh, phenomenon. And it really helped me to understand the people's lived experiences as far as the phenomenon of study was concerned. Methods, interviews, focus group discussions, and observations were used for uh, collecting data. And the instruments that are used also were the focus group interview guides, focus group discussion guides, and the observation guides. Sampling was basically convenience and purposive sampling. Now, the sample size of the participants. The sample size of the participant is given here according to the different districts that the data was collected from. The district, for example, Amudat, the tribal group there, uh, we find the Pokot there. The elders who were interviewed were two. The parents who were interviewed were five. The caregivers who, were, who had the focus group discussions were 11. And the ECE focal point officers interviewed was one. Six children were observed, giving a total of 25. Now, this table here gives us varying uh, numbers of the rest of the participants because I reached data saturation when uh, I was on that particular number. Validity and trustworthiness of the instruments. I ensured. Uh, by I ensured the four strategies proposed by Crucel. First of all, looking at the credibility, I did the validation of the instruments by giving different research experts to go through the instruments. And then after that, I piloted the instruments in the districts of, in the non-study districts. Now, dependability was done by use of triangulation methods, and that with the interviews, focus group discussions, and observations to actually verify the data. And transferability, the study used the data collection instruments that were actually piloted in other districts, but not in the districts of the study, and also included the thick verbatim in the report. And confirmability, a draft report was taken back to the NGOs, field officers, and some of the members in the committee to do the member checking. 
data processing and analysis, the data was analyzed uh, by actually following the phenomenology uh, research design studies, and those steps are given according to Malstakas. And what I did during the data, I mean the data processing was after gathering all the information, I had to read through the data several times. After getting familiarization of the data, I had to generate now the initial codes, searching for the themes, reviewing the themes, defining and naming the themes, and then writing the thick verbatim and finally producing the report. Ethical considerations, after clearance from Chambogo University, I went to Gulu Research Ethical Committee to present the proposal. After I was given a letter from there, I went to Uganda National Council of Science and Technology to get the permit. Then when I was given the permit, I went now to the districts of the study. And in the districts uh, where I was carrying out the study from, I visited the district education office to inform the educa district education office about my visits to some of the ECE centers. And they advised me to go to the community development officer so that I would be able to access the communities. Now, obtained, I had to obtain consent from the participants by use of the consent forms, and then obtaining consent for, uh, I mean, assent for, uh, for the children. And then in the report, I used the pseudonyms. I did not include the names of the participants to take care of confidentiality. Now, the findings. To them, these are the ECE quality indicators of caregivers as given by the Karamojongs. They want caregivers who can speak the Karamojong local language to be the ones to teach their children. Anybody who goes, any teacher who goes there speaking English, speaking any other language is actually not good for Karamojong because they are saying, first of all, we don't use that language in our homes. Why do you want our children to be taught using any other language? You want to teach our children bad manners. And that's how the children end up leaving you and going to other places. Because now when you engage them in speaking other languages, the children now will be able to connect to other people and go away from you and they will not be relevant to you anymore. Now, they also want culturally grounded caregivers. Caregivers who understand their culture. Caregivers who know what boy children are supposed to do, girl children are supposed to do. Not any other person to go there and dilute the culture of the Karamajongs. Then the other one is they want the natives from the same community. They're saying we want people whom we know, how they behave, how they relate with us, to be the ones to teach our children. Any other person whom we don't know, we don't want that person to come and teach our children because that person actually can even come and teach our children other things which are not relevant to us, the Karamojongs. Then they want role models, teachers who are role models in the community. For them, they are saying, we want caregivers whom we know have had, uh, who, whom we know have not had any bad record in this community. Their children are ever smart, they bathe them, they have never had any quarrel with the wife or the husband, and the public is aware about it. This person actually dresses very well, does not drink in the community, does not fight, and so, so forth. Those are the people, the, the teachers, they want to teach their children. And these people, the, the caregivers should actually also be married. They are saying a married caregiver is that one who is psychologically stable. Now, is it key, oh, sorry, this is a continuation. Should always identify the problems within the community and teach children to solve them and also be able to relate to what is learned at the site, to what is learned at home, and then use the community environment as a learning process. They don't want the caregivers who teach children about things that are found in the environment, but they want those caregivers who teach children about how to use their environment. For example, if you want to deworm your cow, which hub can you get from the environment to deworm your cow? 
not just teaching them in the environment, we find the trees, we find the shrubs, we find... no, they want the children to be taught how to manage their environment. So these are some of the verbal teams, and this is talking about the culturally competent or grounded caregivers. And this one is talking about uh, culturally competent caregiver. In Karamojong, this is what they said. Ha! Anen kang acha mita yang ketata mana atete. Toen ekatel ikotore iketata mangi duwe ngul pesur akitia mochie ngon angido kole isubi singilo and so forth and so on. Which literally means culturally competent or culturally grounded caregivers. Ha! Huh, for me, I want a caregiver to know my culture so that he or she teaches girls how to make necklaces, decorate clothes with the tree seeds, collecting firewood and cooking, gardening, making fences, plaiting hair, grinding sorghum, building houses, making local beer and sour milk. Those things help them to earn a living and more importantly, to be recognized in the community as skilled karamojongs. Another one said, Achamto yangu kete tata manate tengo, amai keni kete tata man ni dian epit, ngol esubere ni cholongo, ngacho ngayokoi akiduk ngakais and so on, which later means I want a caregiver who can teach the boy child to make tools, yokes, construct huts, make water troughs for animals, teach boys to look after the animals and providing security to the manatas. This boy should be taught how to treat animals using herbs. Otherwise, coming to school to sing and jump around is useless education, madam. Now, objective two. Objective two provides information what the community expects to see of a child coming from an ECE site. But who is a child in Karamoja? For them, they say, for a boy, less than 10 years. And for a girl, immediately the thorn pricks you. You stop being a child. That means immediately you receive your menstruation periods. Whether you receive your menstruation periods at eight years, seven years, you are now an adult. So for a boy, nine years, for a girl, as soon as the thorn pricks you. Now they expect a good child to socialize with others. Socialization here means they expect the children when they go to school to learn how to share things together. For example, they have no problem. There are four children sharing one book. They have no problem. Five children sharing one cup of porridge. There is no problem with one child, I mean, very many children sharing one cup of, I mean, one plate of food. After all, even in their manatas, a family of 10 people shares one plate of bread and they share one and three plates of source. So a school that teaches their children to come along with a cup tomorrow, come along with a plate tomorrow, is a school that is teaching their children, children to be selfish. That is a very bad school. So this is what they mean by socialization. They also want the children to be able to maintain proper sanitation. They all appreciated that sanitation in their, pro I mean, in their community is actually very, very wanting. And they say they wish schools could be able to maintain proper sanitation, to teach our children to maintain proper sanitation, make crafts, like we say, like in the other verbal team, use the skin of the animals, use the tree seeds to decorate things and so on, bells and so on, solve his or her own problems. For them, they say, children should be taught to solve their own problems when they're at school. For example, at home, when the mother has gone to the garden and there is no water, there is no firewood. You don't need to wait for the mother to come and tell you, go and collect firewood, go and pick water. No, an intelligent child should be able to solve his or her own problems. And this is what schools should teach the children. If there is no water, let the children go and collect water without being told. And that's what they call intelligence. Now, they should also be security conscious. When they take the animals out, they should be able to know where is the enemy coming from climb the tree, come down, and be able to know where the enemy should be able to come, I mean, is coming from. 
Now they should also be told to read and write only the Angakarmojong local language, not any other language, because that kind of subject will help them to survive or fit in the community. Actually, they called literacy and learning mathematics as survival subjects. They, should, they also talked about demo, they should be able to demonstrate to good morals like trust and honesty and exhibit animal awareness, treating animals, milking animals, taking care of animals. How do you do that? It should be uh, a skill that you use for doing that. And that's what they want the children to be taught. These are some of the verbatims from the, from the participants. Aya ayakao ka ape achamte yangi kako kuto yenarukit kanguluche emame jie. Amaiki ni nait nyeke tataman atete toya nyutingi bore ngul kitatame duwe. Socialization. I want my child to learn to live with other children without fighting. So the caregivers should find ways of teaching children to like one another and encourage them to share their things while playing or eating. The third objective as looking at ECE sites quality indicators. And the intention of this objective was actually to establish quality indicators for a site that can make it to be sustained in Karamoja. And one of the things they talked about is they want these sites to be near their manyatas for safety reasons. Anything beyond their manyatas, they cannot allow their children to go there. What if anything happens to them? will be able to give them security. So our idea of going there to construct schools far away from these maniatas is actually a waste of time. Those schools will be abandoned. Now have also active site management committees that link the communities with the parents and allow children to come with the siblings because the parents during farm work go to the gardens, leaving the young children at home. So if the schools refuse, these young ones, the siblings to come with their young ones to school, then that school is not a good one because they are refusing other children. Yet it's a school for children. So during the farm work, parents go to do the farming and the, the brothers and sisters come along with the young, one, the young ones to, to class. Then also um, have reliable water supply because of the the harsh weather in Karamoja, they say a good site is that which has a borehole, a water source, so that their children keep drinking water because sometimes they have nothing to eat. Then have not have actually fenced classrooms. They don't want uh, constructed classrooms for their children for reasons in case anything happens that you do not be able to, they will not be able to rescue themselves. Uh, we are going to be about, sorry, the continuation. There should also be many, they sh there should be many children in need. For them, they say a good center is that one which has very many children. And the reason behind the center having very many children is that they are attracted to the services in that center. So when they see a center with very many children, they know those services in that center are actually very good. Then teach Karmojong culture, allow children to eat communally from same containers, prepares food for the children, and has native caregivers, most especially ladies who are chosen from the communities. Now, these are some of the Baba teams. Um, which literally means near the Manatas. For me, I want the ECE side to be near our manyata so that I can monitor the security of our children. And in case of any security threat, our children can just slide inside our homes. Madam, you see those nice abandoned centers up there? It is because we cannot allow our children to go to, to, go to those first centers because of insecurity issues. And another one says, high enrollment for me, I will take my child to a site where there are many children compared to the one with a few children. Let me tell you, madam, when you see a site with high enrollment, it means that is a good site because children keep going to such a site based on the services provided by the caregivers. Now, these are some of the 
classrooms in this EC, in this EC sites. Now, looking at these pictures, you realize that these people came and opened a class here, leaving a constructed classroom, which was a little bit distant from here. Because they are saying this, that classroom is far from where our homesteads are. So they brought the chalkboard, put it there, and this place you see here is a place where you, the community usually meets if the community wants to meet. They come out of their manatas and meet up around that place. Now, this was actually like break time. We had arrived there. And this is one of the reasons why they want the children to be out. Children come with their siblings. Children come with their animals. So the animals cannot actually be put in the classrooms. So we rather have the animals, the children outside. They come with their calves. They come with their siblings and so on. So schools should not limit age entry because children must come with their siblings. Yeah, this is one of the songs they were singing for welcoming us. Now, this is a bad school for Karamoja. We found this place, very beautiful school, fenced with even a gate, but it was abandoned. We reached there, we found nobody was at school. But when they saw us, they came around and they were asking us why we were there. Then we said, well, we wanted to come and see the children who are studying here. They said, nah, ah, that's a, a very bad school for us. How can you build a school and put a gate around? And put a, it is even far away from an, our maniatas. But if anything happens to our children, so we abandoned that school. Even with the playing materials, there is somewhere the other side. They are, the school was actually abandoned. Now, what do these results mean to us? The word quality attached to caregivers or teachers varies depending on one's perspective. In the US and Uganda, they focus on the nature of caregiver preparation and advanced degrees. Ministry of Education and Sports Policy considers uh, a quality caregiver as that one who has a qualification, a degree, and so on. While in Karamoja, they prefer caregivers who are role models and have earned a good name in the community. In Uganda, teachers are expected to work in any part of the country, like you and me. I'm from Bukedia, but I'm working in Kampala. But in Karamoja, they don't want. They say we want our native teachers to come and teach our children. In case they find a teacher brought for, by UNICEF from another community to teach their children, that teacher is actually closely, closely monitored. And if they see what that teacher is teaching their children is not what they want, they take away their children from that school and you find that the school is abandoned because of that. So they want their own native teachers to teach their children. So if we want to sustain EC in Karamoja, it's a high time that we consider uh, employing those native caregivers. Now, the schools focus on quality caregivers as those who are registered by the means of education and sports. The communities focus on caregivers recognized in terms of exemplary life and cultural competence. Be a native of this area, skilled in animal psychology, trusted role models, speak of a Kanmojong local language, and so forth. Sites without such te teachers will actually be abandoned. Now, in the second objective, we're looking at the children. According to Karamajongs, the children mature at the age of 10 years. For the boys and for the girls, the age is not specific. Therefore, those children who mature at that age now begin assuming adult roles. Now, that contradicts with the Government Children's Act of 1998 that a child is a person below 18 years. So ECE programs that maintain ECE Children who mature early can actually not be sustained. That school would be a bad one because you are maintaining adults in the school. Now, National Cultural Development Center, ECE curriculum, expect the children to be taught about their environment. However, the Karamojongs want them to be taught about how to manage their environment. 
Now in Karamoja, children below five years are not actually supposed to leave their manyatas for security, for security reasons. That contradicts with the Uganda integrated ECE policy, which requires children to be taken to school at the age of three years. So sites that need children below five years cannot actually be sustained. The education system in Uganda has no problem for children to leave their homes and go to boarding schools. After that, you can eventually go elsewhere in the world and study and even get work. This contradicts the aspirations of the Karamojongs who want their children to remain in the communities. A site that encourages children to leave their community can actually not be sustained. ECE sites, Karamojongs treasure quality indicators that focus on life. For example, respect for elders, personal hygiene, socialization, culture, and learning how to survive in a difficult environment. While schools focus on academic quality indicators, for example, proficiency in English, ICT, play, numeracy, and all the learning areas that are actually provided according to the learning, ECD learning framework. The other one is whereas Uganda basic requirement minimum standard indicators sees quality of sites in terms of facilities, child teacher uh, ratios and parent activities engagement. Karamojong's communities focus on accessibility. That's why they want open places for their children to use as classes. Flexible, they want schools, for example, during farm work, Schools should actually be flexible to say you can begin classes at 10 or 11. Should not say that you should follow the strictly the timetable and appropriateness of the content. Now, our learning development standards for Uganda suggest EC activity should be play based learning. Now, the Karamojong say, I take my child to school to just go and play, I rather keep that child at home and the child does something for me, other than just going to school to just jump up and down and play. That's wasting time. Now, Ugandan classes also encourage individualization. For example, one children to come with one book, one pen, sit on one chair, one plate, one cup, and so on. Karamojangs prefer communal sharing of items. Contribution to the body of knowledge. The study brings out contradictions in provisions of early childhood services between what government standards and cultural quality standards. We as education experts have been trying to implement schooling standards, yet Karamojongs actually prefer life quality standards. Our insistence on implementing school, schooling standards actually makes the ECE programs not to be sustained in Karamoja. Now, the study has also been able to identify early child education priorities, education priorities according to the Karamojongs. So working with those priorities helps to sustain the ECE programs that may have been misunderstood. So the mentality of getting things and taking to Karamoja will not work. And so if we don't understand this, we shall not be able to sustain ECE programs in Karamoja. Conclusion. There are different, there are actually differences in quality indicators between what government is presenting and what Karamojongs want for their children. The education service being provided by various actors for Karamoja people does not reflect the education aspirations of the Karamojongs. Now, the belief that Karamojongs are backward and therefore they need developed persons from other countries or other places to go and force education to them is misjudgment of the Karamojongs. They will always resist those programs. Now, ECE programs should reflect things done in the communities so as to remain relevant and those ECE centers will be sustained. Many people in Karamoja still hold on cultural ideas and beliefs about children that may be considered as harmful. For example, children maturing at 10 years 
their reason need, action needs to be explored. Now, the school setting in Karamoja do not necessarily have to be formal structures to make children learn. Instead, flexible structures, I mean, flexible timetabling, flexible structures can be a good way of keeping children and sustaining ECE programs in Karamoja. And then the other one is lack of compromise between the sites and the communities encourages hatred, increased uh, school dropouts, rejection of caregivers, and wastage of resources. As communities leave supported schools to collapse, immediately the funding stops. Recommendations to the Ministry of Education and Sports. The study found that the people of Karamoja have specific needs due to the nature of their environment. It is recommended that the ECE curriculum is made flexible enough to allow caregivers to value and reflect these practices. And the study also found that Karamojongs need ECE caregivers who can effectively practice their culture. It is recommended that caregiver training should include these indigenous cultures or indicators to make teachers relevant in their communities. To the district education office, the research found that communities prefer teachers who are culturally competent. It is recommended that persons who allocate caregivers to community sites need to get community consent if those programs are to be sustained. Now, the study found that the ECE sites <clears throat> were not observing the basic requirement minimum standard indicators for education institutions. It is recommended that the district education office works with the DES and works with the communities to establish guidelines that actually recognize community standards, challenges, and needs. National Curriculum Development Center, the study found that the Karamojongs want their children to learn more about their culture. It is recommended that NCDC reviews the ECD uh, curriculum to include those things as far as culture is concerned. The study found that most of the EC interventions collapse immediately after funding. It is recommended that the non-formal curriculum initiatives like the special interest group curriculum actually be developed with the community, with the community to supplement the national ECE curriculum. And then the ECE sites, the study found that the Karamojongs do not have fixed schedules for activities in a year. It is recommended that the sites provide flexible education schedules to meet the needs of the community throughout the year. And then the study found the Karamojongs want a skilled, skilled child after graduating from an ECE site. It is recommended that the ECE sites put emphasis on apprenticeship pedagogy for skills development. To the non-government organizations, the research found that the Karamojongs consider that their children mature at 10 years. It's recommended that the Karamojongs be sensitized about the risks that they engage their children or when they are actually given the adult roles, when they see secondary sex characteristics. The study found that communities prefer teachers from their own communities. It's recommended that NGOs who have an interest in training ECE teachers should train those seconded from the communities. And finally, the research found that one of the items that can sustain ECE programs in Karamoja is availability of food. It is recommended that the communities, community centers be provided with the food. These are the references that I used. And these are my publications. I thank you. I submit your person. Thank you very much, Martha, for giving us an abridged version of your research. Um, I think now you will have to take a seat, get your book close to you as we begin engaging with you, delving in depth to understand the other issues surrounding your work.
they say the devil is in the details. And uh, I want to believe that uh, this engagement will also bring out those details and not necessarily the devil. Maybe we'll get a white angel. Yeah, so um, can we get a mic for the examiners, which is not in use? Somebody has to move it around. So we begin with the external examiner who ideally has, uh, you will engage as long as you see that uh, you are okay <laughs> with the responses. Thank you, Professor Mugaga, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Professor Aikolu. Martha, are you from Karamoja or from Teso? And in Teso, do they say Yoganoi or Yalamanoi? Which, what do they two mean? Yoganoi is a greeting and Yalamanoi is a thank you. So I'm combining both. Thank you. Thank you very much for the elaborate presentation. Thank you, Professor. We are going to have a small engagement. For those men who doubt their children cut out a DNA test to verify whether indeed the child is theirs. Why I asked whether you are from Teso or Karamoja, uh, there is a fallacy around that people from Teso or Karamoja are not supposed to be brown. So, but it's a fallacy, and you know fallacy in, 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 in philosophy is a false argumentation. Martha. Yes, Professor. I want to thank you for good work done so far. You, you ventured into a very intricate arena. Your subject combines the Karamojong anthropology. Hope you ever heard of that word, anthropology. Yes. The Karamojong anthropology, the Karamojong education and early childhood care education, which is commendable. Two, you made good findings, which if tuned well, can be of great use to, to practitioners in that sector. Three, I want to thank your supervisors at times, it's not very easy to, 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 to bring students to this final conclusion. Thank you very much, the supervisors. But that's not my work. My work is to cut out a DNA test on Martha's work to verify whether it is Martha's work or someone coached you. Martha, do you have your book? Yes, Professor. Go to chapter one is page three. Martha, at PhD, what makes a good study background? What components, what should be the characteristics of a good study background? At PhD, a good study background should have a lot of information about your study variables. True and false. Because it could be a lot of irrelevant information, but to the study. So a good background should have the history of the study context. 
a well conceptualized or definition of the key variables, theories about the study and what is happening, which is the context. Mm. Question number two. When did early childhood care for more education begin in Karamoja? When it is started? Hmm. Because when you say quality indicators and the sustainable early childhood education programs from a community perspective, a case of Karamoja region, Uganda, we assume that you are educating I Mugaga, who has never been to Karamoja, on when that type of education began. And the next question will be, what type of education, what type of ECD or ECE was there prior to the introduction of that? And that's why I said a good study background should have the history, a historical background, call it a historical background. Question number three. What ECD or ECE programs are there in Karamoja? The ECE, thank you so much, Professor, for that question. The ECE programs which are there in Karamoja, um, early childhood education, that provides education to the young ones and also early childhood care and education that also has a provision for providing health services to the children. Question number four. Have you ever come across the National Integrated ECD Policy? Yes, Professor. What does it say? As far as EC is concerned? The National Integrated ECD mm. Policy. Because I think it has even been amended. But what does it say? It has very many things in it. It talks about the stakeholders' roles in promoting ECE. And also it talks about the different ECE programs that can be provided to the children. Did you mention them in your background? Yes, I did mention them. Page? Oh, in the background here. Uh, page three, I've talked about early child education. In the first line. Mm -hmm. Then I also talked about in page four, I talked about early childhood development. Mm -hmm. You have to talk about the matter. Mm, okay. You might be looking for a needle in the ocean. The other question. When someone is designing an early childhood education program, what are some of the key issues he or she should look out for? Uh, thank you so much, Professor. Some of the key issues that you need to look at when you're designing an ECE program is uh, how the program is going to be implemented, who is going to implement, and how it's supposed to be evaluated. Great. The other question. Have you ever read a small book by a gentleman called John Mbiti, African Religions and Philosophies? No, Professor. You may need to read about that book because 
it tries to give the controversy between the European all the European education systems and then the traditional ones. And then in the course of your study, did you come across a research by a gentleman called Akepa Imis? Akepa is a priest in Soroti Diocese. And his study was initiation ceremonies in Tororo Diocese. That is before Tororo Diocese was separated into Tororo and Soroti. And in Scope, it says, from childhood to adulthood, among the Teso and the Karmojongs. Did you come across such a study? No, Professor. It is there in Gaba National Seminary. Did you, by good luck, read about a gentleman called John Roscoe, the Nilohamites and the Nilotics, specifically the Teso? and the Karamojongs, whom he calls Ekara Emojong. I don't know what it means. He calls the Karamojongs, is it the Ekara Emojong, maybe the elders or something like that. Have you come across that? It is a 1909 book, which hmm. gives a detail of how the Karamojongs behave or behaved prior to the intervention of the other tribes and the Europeans. Professor, no. But, but we are going to be an expert in that area, so you may need to, 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 to read about that. Let us continue our engagement, Martha. Martha. Yes, Professor. What was your study problem? My study problem is that in Karamoja, uh, there are so many ECE programs that are uh, implemented, but immediately the funders leave, the sustainability of the programs is actually not realized. So that is the problem? Yes. If they leave and they are not able to sustain them, so what? They are, after all, they are very many. There are very many programs, they can always pick on another. So what is the real problem, Martha? The problem is sustaining ECE programs. So was your problem, should we read it as sustainable early childhood education programs for a community, from a community perspective, or quality indicators? Lack of those, I'm trying to guide you. So what is the real problem? Is this sustainability or the lack of it? The problem is sustainability. I want you to tell me in your own words what you really feel the problem is. Professor, um, the problem I feel for Karamoja as far as ECE is concerned is that there are very many NGOs supporting these programs, but immediately these NGOs leave, the centers also collapse. So that is actually is the big problem that I'm looking at. Now, let us engage that a little bit further. Yes. So there are very many NGOs mm. engaged in ECD, OECE, in Karamoja, and as soon as they leave, it collapses. Normally, the problem leads us to the study objectives. Read your study objectives and see whether they tarry with that statement. Read for us. That's page 25. The first objective uh, is saying to assess the caregivers' early childhood quality indicators that ensures sustainable programming from a community perspective. Number two. 
explore the expected child EC equality indicators that ensure sustainable programming from a community perspective. Number three. To establish the ECE's, ECE site quality indicators that ensure sustainable program, pro, programming from a community perspective. Martha, from what you have said, NGOs come around, provide ECD, they disappear and it collapses. Do those objectives start with that statement? Hmm? These objectives helps to address the issues of sustainability in the area. But they don't. At least if you can see hmm. the connectivity, me, I don't see it. Implying we may need to refine them a little bit. Refine them a little bit okay, to tarry professor. with your title. Okay, For example, mm -hmm. you could, and I'm not giving a gospel suggestion, but you can see, what of to establish the nature and state of community ECD in Karamoja region? What is it? The quality, then you establish your quality indicators for that community thing in Karamoja. And then sustainability. How is it sustainable? You, you need to, to see how they relate with the title. And you see, because of constrained objectives, you decided to go and create a lot of masturbation at the very end. What do I mean? You ended up giving us about 20 conclusions and about 10 recommendations because the objectives, the moment you give more than the, 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 the you are state objectives in the conclusions, then someone finds a problem, it means there is a problem here. When you look at your conclusions, there are too many. Recommendations, too many, but you have three. So you need to, 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 to refine them and tell them, let us proceed. But that is something you can uh, refine. Thank you, Professor. I will do that. So, Martha. Yes, Professor. Let us go to 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 chapter three. Go to the slide which had your. Uh, research methodology. Okay. What is a method? A method is a, it's like a procedure. That guides you to do something. Then what are study tools? Study tools are the same as the study instruments that you use for collecting data. So, are interviews methods, focus group methods, are they tools? Are they approaches? Interview as a method, interview is a method, focus group discussion is a method and observations. But as, insist, as an instrument, it becomes an interview guide, a focus group discussion guide, and observation guide. What is primary data and secondary data? What is the difference between the two? The primary data, for example, in this study, the verbatim is the primary data. And the second data is the data that you get, uh, for example, from newspapers, journals, and so on. What was your study paradigm or philosophy? Go to that slide. My study paradigm there, there, there. is an interpretivist world belief. What do you mean by epistemological interpretivist worldview? Epistemological is a is knowledge. Knowledge interpretivist worldview. Does it make sense? 
or you just uh, so a big good term so that I scare these guys. Let me just say epistemological interpretivist. Knowledge interpretivist. Let us say. Actually, <laughs> epistemological it means a discourse on knowledge interpretivist. Does it make sense? Assuming you, leave, you left out epistemology mm. and just said interpretivist, would it make a difference? No, doctor. Then leave out that scaring term of epistemology. Otherwise, they'll ask you what you mean by epistemology, and then you learn in unnecessary problems. Okay, okay let us continue. Okay, Professor. Still, what was your study population, Martha? My study population were the caregivers, uh, children, parents, elders, and the ECE for co-point officers. Now, what is the difference between a parent population, target population, and accessible population? Accessible population is the population that you actually used that you used for for collecting the data and then beg your pardon professor parent parent population mm. parent population uh, the numbers of parents that you Martha. the number of parents you studied the number of parents that are that you actually you, you used they will turn you back to the field to study research, no, to the classroom to study research methodology. Parent is the overall study population. Yes. When you say that it is the parents you studied, we shall return you back to the a module on research methodology. Then what of target population? The target population is that is that one that you as you hear the word target that you target to no <laughs> martha even your supervisor is laughing at you so martha what do you mean by quality ecd or e c e quality what do you mean by the word quality how do you conceptualize the word quality Quality in this perspective, I mean probably the best that you can get from ECE. The ideal. Or the, okay, thank you, Professor, uh, the ideal. So, how did you define these indicators? How did you get them? From what other models did you benchmark? To guide you, we have models like Montessori, Wado, blah, 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 high scope, and so forth. So, which model did you maybe benchmark? Have you ever heard of Montessori? Yes. What is it, by the way? What animal is that? Montessori is uh, talking about the model of play based learning. What of high scope? Have ever heard of that animal? Is it a rituamu keke or rituajono? What? You see, Martha, why I'm asking you these questions? You are coming out as an expert in ECD. And you're going to attend conferences on ECD. And these things should be on your fingertips. And so when you are looking for quality indicators, you don't just pick them from your head. You benchmark. You benchmark and then show these are my indicators, but some other person, because in literature should have been shown. The other issue, still chapter three, which is study on methodology. How did you control for quality of your study? For issues to do with the quality, I did the validation of the instruments before mm -hmm. going to collect the data. And I also piloted the instruments before collecting the data. So what are the two terms we use while referring to quality in research? 
the two terms are validity and reliability. Excellent. I thought you were asleep, but now you are awake. Thank you, Prof. How did you handle issues of ethics given the challenge of the terrain you are studying in? The issues to do with the ethics after getting clearance from Chambogo University, I went to Gulu Research Ethical Committee to present the, the proposal. And then after that, uh, after I got that letter, I was guided to go to Uganda National Council of Science and Technology. And then when I reached the districts, I visited the district education office and they advised me to go to the sub counties to meet the community development officer. And then now I proceeded to the okay. communities. Okay. How did you determine your study sample, Martha? My study sample. How did you determine it? I, I did the sampling to determine the study sample, Professor. You did sampling? Yes, Prof. What is sampling? Sampling is uh, getting appropriate kind of... Okay, so the specific spe study yes. samples, how did you get them the children how did you identify that i have to study this number of children these parents and so forth the children i i intended to observe three children and i did that using the convenience polling technique i didn't observe the children three when, children yes three children per center so martha in research there are technical ways of carrying out our business to determine a sample there is what we call sample determination sample selection determining a sample you can compute you can use a table and then there are some sampling techniques like purposive convenient and so forth going to the district education officers is purposive the children you have to clearly also do that and Thank find out that. Another question. How did you sort out the issue of validity? And I'm bringing back that one a second time. Thank you so much, Professor. For the issues of validity, I did a lot of back and forth um, editing of the tools by using the research experts. Research uh, experts do not edit the tools. Hmm? Continue, continue, continue. Okay, I used the research experts to help me go through the tools. First of all, uh, I wrote the tools basing on the three objectives. Mm -hmm. And after that, mm -hmm. I I explained to the research assistants what I intended to do as far as those objectives were concerned. And then after giving them, they ticked the ones they thought were appropriate according to the objectives that were on that instrument. Uh, thereafter, when they brought back those instruments, I, I considered the ones that were ticked by more than seven uh, people as those ones that were valid. So the ones which were not ticked by beyond seven people, I considered them as the questions that were not actually valid. So, but what I did is uh, I kept on rewriting them and took them back to the research experts. Now, the second time they brought back, some of them had passed and some of them had not, but what I realized that in the process, those which did not pass actually were covered in other questions. Mother, from your study, yes, professor, give me three salient study findings corresponding to the three objectives you present, three 
salient conclusions and three recommendations. The findings I'm going to present based on the objectives. As far as the early caregiver early childhood quality indicators are concerned, uh, the Karamojongs are saying they want caregivers who are culturally grounded, speakers of Denga Karamojong, and the native speakers. And in natives. Over, uh, put for us the study objectives. There. So give us one, one finding corresponding to objective number one. The finding for number one, they want caregivers who are actually natives who come from within that community. They want Karamojongs who, I mean caregivers who speak Danga Karamojong local language. And they want caregivers who are actually role models. Then objective two, they want children. No, I told you one finding. Okay, one, one finding. One finding, one conclusion, one recommendation. Okay. Because well, I'm trying to refine you. Yes. You decided, I used a very crude word. You might say to my subject by meandering around. I want you to go straight. The study, blah, 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 this. Process the caregivers, PC, quality indicators that ensure sustainable programming for a community perspective. Number one. Number one, um, taking the native caregivers. And one of the conclusion is that if we are to sustain EC in Karamoja, we need to employ uh, caregivers that are seconded by the communities who are actually natives. The recommendation? And the recommendation is that the study found that the Karamojongs prefer people, I mean, yes, people who are actually known to them to teach their children. So it's recommended that we needed to employ caregivers who actually come from the communities. Now, the second objective to explore the expected child EC equality indicators that ensure sustainable programming from a community perspective. One of the uh, answers given here is that um, they need children actually to be taught how to socialize while they are in this while they are in these ECE centers. Now the conclusion here is that for us to aim to sustain ECE programs in Karamoja, we need to understand in depth. Uh, we need to understand in depth how uh, to handle children while they are in the ECE center. For example, we talked about uh, teaching them how to share same containers for eating, share a book, share a plate, and so on. And the recommendation here is that the study has found that the ECE, in order for you to sustain the ECE in Karamoja, we need to actually encourage the children to socialize with one another. So it's recommended that we, we, the teachers be guided on what the Karamojong aspirations are as far as their children are concerned. Then to establish the ECE site quality indicators that ensure sustainable programming from a community perspective, the answer I'm giving here is uh, they need the ECE centers to be near their manyatas. Now, the study has discovered that for us to sustain ECE centers, we need to, to have the ECE centers near the manyatas. So those organizations that are actually supporting ECE activities in Karamoja should consider this if they want ECEs to be sustained in Karamoja. Master, are you very happy with the flow? You see, you need now to refine the language in your book. Coincidentally, the data is there. But <laughs> the way you present it does not tarry with the objectives. 
Number three says to establish the ECE site quality indicators that ensure sustainable programming from a community perspective. And I thought simply to the study found out that the following are the site quality indicators that ensure sustainable blah blah blah. Ah, and then you mention them. But the way you are, that's why I call it masturbating. <laughs> then number two, to explore the expected child is quality indicators. And you give us those quality indicators. Now these are the quality indicators, but the way you do it, I don't see them. But they are there, because they are there. Then to assess the caregivers is quality indicators that ensure sustainable programming from a community. Then you give us. And then in your conclusion, you say, that our oh, recommendation that for Karamoja to have blah blah blah, these indicators should be refined or something like that. So you need to to as I wind up. Thank they you. are why did you choose Karamoja and not Teso? After all, even Teso borderlines like Toroma have equally problematic. By the way, I've worked in that area. I've worked in Toroma. I'm a man who had my education in Nagongera before Sorota and Tororo separated. So I worked in Toroma. That was 92. I mean, 82, 81, before Teso became a desert. So I know that area. So why did you choose Karamoja and not in other area? I chose Karamoja for the reason that uh, Karamoja is one of the places which has very few children enrolled in ECE centers. Number two, still on that. How would your study help people of Buvuma, Kalangala, Sese Islands, which almost have similar challenges? I think the findings from my study can help them generate uh, indicators that can help them sustain pro ECE programs in those areas. And finally, what should be the role of government in enhancing ECE in constrained regions of Uganda? If today they invite Dr. Martha Apollot to go and give a talk or a brief, a police brief to the Minister of Education on constrained areas you see is concerned what would be your five points you'd raise to her uh, to me i would say those constrained communities first of all need to be listened to and we need to understand how they want things to be done and we guide them on what we expect them to do. And then uh, I will also talk about probably a special interest group curriculum that such centers can have in order for them to sustain education activities in those centers. And then the other one is uh, I will take the initiative to actually give them information about the relevance of early childhood education to their children and the benefits that their children can gain from accessing ECE services. And then I will tell them about the roles of the different stakeholders in supporting ECE activities in the community. Okay, there is a certain type of education which I forget, the house could help. Is it a bake? 
Have you ever heard of that? Yes, Professor. What is it? It is alternative basic education for Karamoja. Did you cite it somewhere in your work? Yes, I cited it somewhere in my work. And then finally, what policy implication does your study bring out? A policy implication here is on that ECD, on ECD, not on on no poor on what, but on ECD. The policy implication here is that we need to uphold indigenous knowledge owned by communities. What is indigenous knowledge? <laughs> indigenous knowledge is uh, knowledge which is Professor, maybe I need to. You are the one who said it. <laughs> you are now provoking me to ask you two more questions. And one of them is what was your, what theory did you use for your study? I used the social capital theory and the strength exactly. theory. Why not Talcott Parsons social change theory? Have you ever heard of Talcott Parsons and social change? No, Professor. You may need to look at. Him. He's okay. more community based. Okay, Professor, I'll do that. Indigenous knowledge is the knowledge of Common. the community and so forth. Mm. So, thank you very much, Martha. Thank you so much, Professor. And I return you back to the dean. At least the DNA is proving that uh, she's the mother of the child unless and the father <laughs> she she had some chemicals because they say now the vaccine can change the dna so thank you very much martha and try to make corrections on your objectives corrections in chapter four especially ensure that your work Conclusions and recommendations tarry with the set objectives. It becomes very outrageous to have three objectives and 20 conclusions and then 15 recommendations. They use that crude word that you are masturbating with research and you don't want someone to use such a word. And at times, why at PhD, you should be very careful with your work because you are teaching at the university a student will pick out your work from the shelf and will be very embarrassed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Mugaga, for that good interaction. I picked interest in uh, your question. If Martha was to advise the minister, uh, what would she say? And I quickly looked through Martha's work, and uh, there's one classic book education book that uh, could help her and that is by uh, Paulo Freire pedagogy of the oppressed how to determine uh, content for a liberating education education that liberates so those three critical components uh, you'll find in that book please take interest and this book is available Check Aristoc if you want to do that. So um, our next examiner um, will be Dr. Lydia. You'll find a way of uh, trying to ask questions that perhaps has not been uh, raised before uh, so that we, um, we go through that session. Dr. Lydia, you're welcome to the floor. I don't know. Okay, it's fine. Um, good morning. Um, good morning. I'll stay in the morning, anyway. Yes. Good morning, Martha. Thank you, uh, you and your uh, supervisors, for coming this far. 
I'll go straight to um, my interaction with you. I'll start with the title itself. You later on, I find out your studies are phenomenological study, meaning that you're, you're dealing with lived experiences. When I look at your title, you're talking about a case. So then I start to wonder if you're dealing with a case study or maybe that's something you need to rethink. Um, so just thinking about the work as a whole, it needs massive editing. So the use of full stops, colons, there's a total mess in there, to be honest with you. So you need to go back. If you can find an editor that is accepted, but we need a, we need a book on the shelf that reflects scholarship. And so that is a big part of the work. Um, then when I go to your background, your background is, uh, the, the background even before you go to the historical and all the others is about nine pages in the book that I have, the version that I have, that is way, way too long. And uh, in establishing your background, you're supposed to show a gap in the knowledge. So we know very well that your study is situated in Karamoja, but the problem that you're researching is bigger than Karamoja. So could you ask if, if your problem is about the lack of community-based um, input into ECE, then that should be what you problematize and then you um, have the literature there. Then you talk about Karamoja very briefly because you have a lot about Karamoja as a background. You're going to have your contextual perspective to tell us more about Karamoja. In your background, let us see this problem and know that it's not just a problem of Karamoja, but Karamoja is going to be the lens that helps you do the investigation. Uh, moving on. Um, when you go to that contextual background, is very thin. That is because most of what should have gone there is in the, uh, is in the background, the first background that you write. Uh, then you go to the conceptual background itself. You talk about, you define two concepts, that is quality and sustainability. And you define each of them with only, using only one author, yeah? and you stop there. So I feel like you should have explored that more than using just one author as if, you know. Uh, when you go to your problem statement, uh, it has already been talked about by Professor Mukaga, um, that one of, the, one of the things that we have talked about when we are talking to Chambogo students about a problem statement is that it has three parts. You have the ideal situation. So what does ideal look like? So I expect you to say, uh, in an ideal situation where communities are involved, you talk about the literature and then you say, however, so that would be the second part of your, uh, your problem statement where you are actually, uh, where you're, you're honing in on the problem. And then we are able to see that this problem is different from the ideal, that there's a, that there's a disparity between the ideal and the, what, uh, and, the, and the actual. And then the third part of the statement is then you say, okay, therefore this study and then you conclude and we see what you're going to do, what your intervention is going to look like. And when you do it like that, it will quickly lead to the purpose statement, which will flow. So one of the things uh, my colleague pointed out is that your purpose statement does not connect to the, uh, to the problem statement and then also your objectives don't, don't follow. So you need to have a very particular, to, you need to be very systematic in making sure that everything is aligned and that is one way that you can do it. Um, also, issues of quality and sustainability do not come into it. They are not in your problem statement. And yet we see them in, this has already been talked about, so I'll just continue. Um, when you come to the significance of your study, you need to pick your, uh, now that you have done the, that you've done the study and finished it, you need to look, pick from your findings and, and, and show why your study is significant. Okay, to show, you need to show why it was necessary to do, what did you find and why was it necessary. So the way you present it here is as if it's a proposal, as if you're not yet sure how significant your work is. So the things that you found will help you concretize uh, why your studies was really necessary. Um, and then, uh, and by the way, just going back to the problem statement a bit, you always have to justify your problem. And how do you do that? You can also pull in a bit of the literature to show exactly what you, uh, what it is that is, a, is it really a problem because we can't take your word for it. Um, so this is just um, an issue of writing. 
every time you finish a section, you need to have a summary to sort of give us an idea of what, what the key issues were in there. Um, and then the research approach, um, I think to me that was the, what I found as the biggest problem with your work. You tell us that you're going to use a phenomenological research design and you don't, you don't deliver on your promise. We don't see, you say you're going to talk about lived experiences and what we see to me looks more like a case study. Lived experiences means I'm going to see stories in there. So really what your approach is really to focus on people's experiences of the phenomena. How have people experienced ECE within the Karamoja region? That is a kind of approach. So to me, this is not a phenomenological design, research design. It means you have to go back I would, I would, either you'd have to go back and read about what, what it means to do a phenomenological study or read other phenomenological studies and see how they, how they present their findings. Otherwise, you'd have to call this a what? A case study because there are no stories. And following from that, the other problem I had was also the, the 115 participants for a qualitative study that is, I, I can't even, it's, it's extremely, such, that's such a big number. So when you, when you read about uh, saturation, even in qualitative research, they'll tell you, and you cite this in your work, you say Cresswell says, uh, and you cite a very old Cress Cresswell of 1998, and yet we even have up to 2014 and beyond. So first of all, you have to update your references. But be, before that, um, you say Cresswell recommends 25 people, but me, I'm going to use 115. So that is a funny contradiction. So, to, to, so qualitative research by its design, you have to go for small numbers because of the in-depth nature of the work. So the moment you present a qualitative work at PhD level with 105 people, 115 people, that is a red bell. The bell, the, a red flag, sorry, it starts going off immediately. How do you get to 115? That means there are issues of in-depth. So there are ways you could, if you wanted to do, especially with the phenomenological design, it means you're following, you're doing, you're following people's stories. It would have meant that you, First of all, let me ask you a question. Why did you choose five districts? I what did you call them five regions? Why did you choose those five regions? Not five regions, it is five districts. Okay, I chose five, the districts. five districts because um, the EC integrated policy was by a minister of gender was launched in 2015. So I really wanted to trace uh, the progress of that implementation of that policy within those districts. What was the difference? What are the differences between those five districts? Those five districts are actually supported in majorly by two NGOs mm -hmm. as far as EC activities are concerned, that is UNICEF and Save the Children. So I really wanted to track and see the progress in those five districts supported by those NGOs. Um, do you think that doing it in what, what difference would have been would have been there if you had done it in two districts rather than five? What difference did you find? Did you find because actually your work you never told us any differences between the districts? Did you do that? No. Yes. Then what was the reason of all five? If you're not going to do any form of compar comparative study, if you're going to trace, can't you trace using one? especially since you gave us a, a time scope of a certain number of years, it means that you can trace using just one district and tell us, okay, there was growth like that. But even if you're telling us you're going to trace, I don't know if your work shows any tracing or if your, if your conclusion shows that you are tracing. Um, so uh, when we think about qualitative methods, why, 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 why would you choose um, so what I'm seeing is that with quantitative, if you're doing a quantitative study, for example, you could have chosen five because you want to show the magnitude. You want to show how big, maybe that's what quantitative researchers do. But if you're doing qualitative research, you want to go in depth. And you don't, you're, you're very sure, one of the things you don't do in qualitative research is you don't generalize. So you want to just get insights into something, meaning you could have taken just one district and gone in depth rather than 
uh, five districts. So that made the study problematic. And then also the idea of a phenomenological study with no, with no um, stories whatsoever. Um, I also wonder about the data on children. I don't see it featuring anywhere. Do you present that data, the observations? Yes, I presented. Give me some of the findings, at least two to three that, that came out. Uh, first of all, I want to know, why did you do the observation? What was the objective of carrying out the observation? Secondly, when I look at your book, I hope I'm looking at the right version. I don't see an observation schedule. And I want to know what you observed and some findings from the observation as well as some recommendations. Now, I did the observation to find out what children like doing while in the ECE centers. And uh, so that what? So that I'm able to really conclude and say what the parents, what elders, and what other participants were saying is actually correlating with what the children were doing in those centers. And some of the things I saw children uh, doing in the centers is uh, they, they liked coming with their, their animals in the ECE centers. They, you find them seated in the class and you find their animals also seated around them. When they get up to sing a song, the animals also get up and they also stand around them. When they get out to go for a break, you find them going straight to the bush. They don't, like the boys, they would pick their, actually the calves would actually follow them and follow them to the bush. So others who were older than the young ones would actually teach them how to, the skills of grazing animals while in the bush. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, what were the findings then? The findings... Or maybe the, uh, little, little, just to, what, what, are the, what are the recommendations from that? The recommendation is that we should actually set these ECE centers near this manyat as if we were to sustain ECE in current because these children uh, come along with their calves from the from the manyatas and sometimes even when they don't come with them they follow them because they know where to find them so that one becomes easier for them you are attending classes you also have other responsibilities during break time you go and graze your animals because it's your responsibility children are given that responsibility the boys are given the responsibility of taking the cows when they are still young okay so fair enough but um, i also wonder about your because the way you the way you do some of the reporting to me it feels more like uh, one of the things missing is your scholarly voice so what about you as a scholar what do you have to say about some of these things yes that is what you found but are you able to be critical or are you able to maybe not be critical but are you, are you able to interrogate what is going on so <clears throat> if children come with their toys what about um what what, what about the facilities within um these centers are they well facilitated for the students to be able to um to, to engage and uh, when you when it comes to um even your recommendations are you going to recommend that for example they come with their with their um with the animals to class is there are there any problematics around that as learning goes on in terms of distraction and other things so in your work generally speaking um that scholarly voice that pushes back or that critics especially being that you're a qualitative researcher that draws in the literature to speak back to the things that you're finding in the work is really 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 missing um okay we'll just uh, proceed okay i still want to go back to the uh, phenomenological research design i want to know martha why did you choose that research design i chose the phenomenology research design because i wanted to get uh those to live the experiences as far as the phenomenon of study was concerned, and that was ECE sustainability. And I wanted to understand in depth their stories as far as 
what they would wish actually to have in their communities in order to sustain the ECE centers. And I felt it was the only approach which was appropriate for me to dig out those narratives from the participants. Um, but did you, <clears throat> does your work reflect stories? Uh, mm -hmm. Because what some of the methods you used, for example, you have focus group discussions. I don't know how you're going to get at stories. I also looked at the kind of questions that you asked. Um, I also, uh, when I look at lesson observation, maybe if you, if you, sorry, observing those children could be that you, as a researcher, you're going to construct a story that's going on, but you haven't spoken to those children, so you don't really know their stories. When I look at your interviews, um, I saw a question on something like, what has your life been like? Then I wondered, what do you want this person to tell you? Eh? So I felt like some of your questions were not really directed at picking out stories. So actually, one of the things I'm going to recommend you to do strongly is to be very strong on methodology, because tomorrow you're going to be instructing our children, our students of the nation, and if you claim to be a qualitative researcher, then you need to sit down and do the reading. So one of the things I picked up on, for example, is when professor asks you about your philosophical stand and, then, and the, way the, way you, the way you use the word epistemology, you could tell that you didn't understand what this word meant. So just go back, pick up Criswell 2014. It's one of the ones that I really usually recommend. Just sit down and read, read about everything, read about observations, read about how you come to your philosophical stance, know what ontology is, know what, know what research designs are, that will guide you into um, putting this work where it's supposed to be. Because now as it stands, it's not a phenomenological research design. And then the other thing I saw in your work is a tendency to define, rather than tell us how you're going to use the interviews, how you're going to use a certain um, perspective, you defined, oh, an interview is this, and you went on and on about it. Re qualitative research is this, you define qualitative research without. The main point is for you to really show us how you do more. It's actually the, the statement we use is do more, do more uh, showing than telling. Don't tell me. So when I go to your data analysis, for example, you pointed out I'm going to use, rather uh, I'm going to, the confirmatability is going to be shown and, uh, um, and um, thick description will be used, but that, that, that doesn't tell me anything. Transferability will be, then even my, subject, my subjectivity statements will be there. There's no subjectivity statement in here. As a qualitative researcher, one of, the reason, one of the questions that uh, Professor Mugaga asked you is why did you choose Karamoja? And as a qualitative researcher, if you had done your reading, you'd even have a section on what we call positionality, where you come out and tell us, I chose Karamoja because of this and that and that. You tell us your biases, you tell us who you are as a researcher. And in fact, one of the things you did in this work is to tell us that um, in order not to be biased, you're going to do I don't know what. But qualitative researchers are biased and they are fine with it. Okay, the only difference is they interrogate those biases. They come out and say, you know what, this is who I am. And this is the angle that I'm taking. This is where I'm seeing what I see. And this is what I might not see because of the angle of where I come from. So in qualitative research, if you do your reading and go in depth there, you will know there's no problem with uh, bias as such, as long as you interrogate it. Um, And then the other thing is as you do, as you write about, as you, as you go about writing your section, sorry, it's not an interaction, it's more of an instruction. I usually get lost. So as you go about doing your talking, say you're telling us you're going to use focus groups, all these things, please put in, a, in, a, in brackets, appendix this, appendix that to make reading easy and to make us uh, go quickly behind and, uh, and, find those, and find those instruments. Um, okay. Uh, I'm almost done. You also tell us that you are going to use uh, focus group discussions. How many focus group discussions did you have? I had 10 focus group discussions with the caregivers. Okay, and all together, how many people were those? There were 50. Why did you have all of those? What, 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 
uh, and what was the composition? How many people per focus group on hand? Men, women, who, who are these people? Because you don't really tell us. Oh, well, you said it was caregivers, but what was, because in qualitative research, you told us here that you use a thick, a thick description. So thick descriptions means you're going to describe and we, uh, in my, I should have, in my mind's eye, I should be able to see really what you're saying. So it means that you're, you have to have done that description, which was not here. But I wonder, uh, go back to my question, how many, uh, what, what was the composition like in the different groups in terms of gender and even numbers? There are 10 groups, but how many per group? How many men, how many women? Oh, it didn't matter. Well, thank you so much. Uh, mm. In each focus group discussion, there were actually five participants. Mm. The other challenge I had with the gender is uh, most of the caregivers were actually ladies. Mm. But in a case where I found they were also men, I would actually consider all of them mm. to be in the focus group discussion. Okay, thank you for that, Martha. Did you find differences between the five focus groups? Uh, well, the, most of them actually gave similar, similar answers mm -hmm. in places. Okay. Yeah. So the, the problem is you had already set yourself up. You set yourself up and said, I'm going to do five districts. Therefore, even if you reach, even if you reach saturation, you had to do five districts. So that is the problem where the, where the gap is, your gap in uh, attending to the literature. Um, then there's a way you arrange your sections, eh? which makes reading your work really difficult. So you go through all the methods. Then before you know it now, you're talking about population. You should have talked about it earlier. Then you start, start telling me you observe five children. I'm like, okay, five? Now where is that? How, how, I thought, you know, eh? so that table, that table that has your respondents should have come earlier in the book. So what I know, Oh, there are five. So by the time I start reading your observation and I, you say you're observing five children or three children, whatever number you chose, I've already seen that. So you need to go back and really structure your work to make reading easy. Um, of course, you said you are 26 sites. All this is really problematic for, for a qualitative study. It has to be narrow, in-depth. And then you, you also had a lot of a very long section on research instruments. Eh? It was too long. Why don't you, I don't know if that is the guidelines of, of, of the university. I'm not very sure of that. But if you're talking about interviews, why don't you talk about the interview guide as well? Why must you talk about interviews? Then again, in another section, you start talking about instruments. Combine those, do that and move away. The other thing I found problematic is also you, you're talking about interviews. You've not even told us about the instrument you're going to use or appendix it. And then you start describing how you did the interviews. So what are you going to put in the procedure of study? You get it. Those sections should be much shorter. Even if it's qualitative, you have a lot of stuff there which shouldn't be. OK. Um, OK. Then piloting your study, you had, I think, I don't know how many pages you had on piloting. Eh? Just something very short, eh? unless you're reporting what you found in the pilot. But if you're just describing piloting and putting in literature, no. Uh, so all the methods that you choose, you need, to, you need to justify them. Why are you doing focus group discussions? Explain a little bit. Why are you doing? <sighs> Then you use the word measurements. There are words that you use as a qualitative researcher, which are problematic. You have the words variables, measurements. You need to, you need to interrogate that. You talk about data collection procedure after validity and reliability. So you need to go back and find out what the guidelines say. Uh, the, the page on ethical issues, too long. I don't know how many pages those were. When it comes to your findings, um, Martha, you, um, the way you report your findings, I want to first ask actually, how did you do your coding, Martha? How, uh, what was your process for coding your qualitative data? So even before you answer that, by the way, when you're talking about your procedure, you need to tell us which method did you, because you had so many methods of data collection, which one was first? How did you do it? Which one was second? Like that, 
leading us up to the analysis and also describing it. So um, what was your method like of uh, data, well, sorry, your coding process? What did it look like given, no, let me, let me leave it at that. What was, your, what was your process like? After getting the information from the instruments of data collection, I had to read through the data several times to understand the information that I had got. Then now I started getting the codes from the data. And after getting those codes now, I had to revise them again. And then after doing that, I, I now based the coding according to the themes. Okay, so you picked up an interview guide. So, so, so first of all, let me take you back a bit. What was your data analysis process like? Tell me I did this, then I did that, then I did that. The data process included familiarization of the data after collecting data using all the instruments. What does familiarization mean? To understand, to read through okay, the data. Good. I want you to use that kind of language, even in your book, no abstract, no big words. I read through the work, mm -hmm, go on. Yes, I read through the work several times. Then um, I started now getting the codes. Did you transcribe? Yes. Okay. Mm, so I transcription was your first process. Then yes. you read through. Uh -huh. mm, yes. Then after that, I now go to the codes. After the codes, I now started coding according to the themes. So then, when you were coding, did you did you pick one interview transcript and use it to code? Did you pick several? What was that process like? No, I picked all the instruments. Mm -hmm. And yes. coded all of them? Yes. Mm -hmm. Then? Then I moved to getting the themes okay. for the codes. So the themes came from the codes. What did you do with the codes to come to themes? I now looked at, for example, I wanted to report my data based on the, the objectives. Okay. So I took, for example, objective one as the theme. Then I wrote the codes based on that theme. Okay, you need to go back and do, and, and, and do some clarity about how you came to the codes. Why am I saying this? When, when I read your findings, they are scattered. So you have, you saw those beautiful quotes that you kept putting up there. Most of your work is full of those. Hmm? I, find, uh, the, I find a thick and they are so thick. You keep finding thick uh, narratives. You find another thick narrative another th with just one line. So what you need to do with proper coding is that you need to be able to aggregate. If, for example, somebody is talking about nutrition, how, uh, maybe other people have also talked about, I'm just giving it as an example, maybe other people have talked about nutrition. That might be a code, okay? So we don't want to see you scattering so many things about nutrition. So you need to, you need to look, look across your uh, transcripts and aggregate. So that, I don't even know if I'm coming through clearly, so that by the time you qualify something as a theme, there are many examples to illustrate it. Okay, so you make your point that you found this and this in the data, and then you put maybe one or two quotes, and then you can also do some paraphrasing. So I want to see more. I want to see less and qualitative research. Of course, our data is in the is in the quotes, but these quotes have to be supporting something. They don't have to just be standing on their own because. When I look at your section on findings, it's as if it's, you, you, it's as if you're just slapping there, you're just throwing your, your, your quotes in there without really picking out what the meat in, the, in that is. And even as I saw your presentation there, as a qualitative, I don't know what order you went about presenting, but as a qualitative researcher, researcher I would have wanted to see those, 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 those the, the emerging findings and a quote, the emerging findings and a quote, but you gave us findings and the quotes on their own, so it sort of gave me a sense of how you are thinking. These things are supposed to be integrated. And then I also wonder about your data. Um, so you had different sets of data sources. You have focus groups, you had observations, you had all these things have to be synchronized, okay? To speak to that, to whatever theme you're speaking about. Okay, if, if the children, if one of the findings that came out, and maybe when you're looking at the third objective on sites, had to do with, um, okay, so I have to wind up my interaction. Um,
Okay, I'll just uh, wind up to give others a chance to uh, interact with you. Uh, but one of the things I, I, would, I would also want you to think about is uh, I heard you talking about using uh, research assistants. You did that. Did you did you talk about research assistants, Martha? Yes, I talked about the research assistant, but actually I meant the the, the people who helped me to translate. Oh, okay, okay. I thought and that's what I meant. Okay, okay. Mm. Um, so and lastly, um, you had pictures on that slide. The ethical issues around taking pictures of children and showing their faces. I don't know how you engaged with that, but that's something to think about for today and also for future work. Do you have permission to do that? And what are the ethical issues around that? Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Doctor. Yeah. Thank you very, very much, uh, Dr. Lydia, for that interrogation. Uh, this is qualitative research, and uh, we are trying to interrogate the doctorate-ness in qualitative research. You are just not only a researcher, but you're a qualitative researcher, and you must get things right from the beginning so that you don't mislead others whom we are going to entrust to you. Um, we have the other examiners, one or two questions. We begin with the Associate Professor James Kagari. You are key, key, key areas. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Martha, for your presentation. Thank you so and much, first Professor. and foremost, I congratulate you for this long journey. I Thank taught you. you in the first semester on this program, and you were in the Mzung in the class. How did the Makaramajong perceive you when you were there? Tell when us. they saw me there, they thought I had gone to take for them something, right. money, food, and so on. So um, when I looked at your slides, why didn't you acknowledge your supervisors that you walked to you the journey all the way for this period. Any reason? Oh, it was just an omission, so that's another one. Uh, members, I'm not going to drill math as others did because I'm not as qualitative as they are. I actually got the book and looked for numbers. I hardly saw the numbers, so I'm after numbers, but uh, I'll try to do my best. Uh, Martha, you did your master's degree, and now this is a PhD journey. What do you think is the difference between a master's uh, research project and a, a PhD project? Uh, the difference here is there is uh, actually a deep analysis of issues compared to the master's. And then also here you look at theories and see how those theories uh, relate to your study. And then you go into learning something in depth, actually. And then your way of thinking actually changes. Up. Thank you, Martha. And so when I looked at the, your topic, quality indicators and sustainability, early childhood education programs, and I read through your work, I found, I think 70% of the work was on sustainability, more than quality indicators. And what came to my mind, probably, these two variables should have been split and focus on one so that you go deep, deep, deep into the subject matter. And uh, if you want to enjoy swimming, you go dive, you dive deep into the swimming pool, isn't it? So then I had that problem that you are more sustainability, less on quality indicators. Um, By the way, what was so outstanding and unique in this study for you? What was unique? Please what? repeat it if you have already said it. Thank you so much, Prof. What was unique in this study is that the study was able to bring out uh, government standards, what government considers as quality standards for schools as compared to what Karamojongs are considered as quality standards for them. So it was about to bring out the difference. Okay. And in your case, what was so interesting 
so unique to you as master in the study that you always live to remember it. What was unique to me is that uh, the Karamojongs really know what they want. For us, we we'll assume that when we take good things for them, we we'll assume we want to improve on their standard. But for them, they are like, mm -mm. for us, we know what we want, and this is what we want. Uh, are those issues in the book? Yes, Professor. And I'm also trying to take you back to your experience of these children coming with their animals to the nurse, to the school. And when they sit, they also lie down. When they stand, they also get up. Is that story anywhere in this book? No. Right. Um, others have been tackled. Um, and I think you've tried to talk about what barriers are to learning in this EC uh, discourse. I would have wanted to get highlights what you think was impeding learning mm -hmm. to children while at home and those barriers while at the, at the ECD center. Are there some which are outstanding? Could you mention one or two at home if you are to learn? What are those barriers that you found there? The barriers that I found there is, um, for example, at school, the children were learning open places, and the other barrier is, in case it rains, the learning ends there. That is the end of the day. So if it rains the whole day, it really becomes a barrier to the learning. For home, I, may, I need to explore on that. Right, that's why somebody was saying when you were interviewing, did this, some of these stories come up? Did you document them? Uh, the next one we want to hear from is about the theories you used. Uh, you used social capital. You used uh, strength model perspective. Yes, Professor. What metaphors do you borrow from those theories? What factors do you get out of those theories? Did the you unpack them? First, looking at the social capital theory, it focuses more on the social networking and trust building groups. So, to what extent did you embed them in your write-up from the beginning up to the conclusion? Do we see them in play and we keep in flow with those metaphors? You may not explain that, but be aware that I had a problem of and packing those theories so that from the word to go, I see how they became relevant. In other words, the question would have been, what was the relevance of these theories to your thesis? Um, maybe, and also the other one, did you look at other theories other than those two? And which ones? And can you mention all two and why did you drop it? At first, I looked at the ecological system theory. But when I read more about it, I realized it was not very appropriate on this study. So now I changed and wrote this too. Okay, and at this point, when you were presenting, I also thought of Vygotsky's community of practice theory. Because here you are, you want to develop the EC discourse, you go with your knowledge, but you also have the indigenous knowledge. So you're not going to impose your knowledge you've gone with to the Karamajongs because they know what they want and they know it. So you learn from them. They also learn from you and then you develop, but you don't have to use it, but you can read further on Vygotsky's theory of community practice. Thank you, Prof. Now, someone has also already brought up the issue of the statement of the problem. And when you came to the theoretical framework, my concern was to what extent did you link the theoretical framework with the statement of the problem? And in other words, where should the focus of the statement of the problem be? And that's why I was trying to ask you the difference between a PhD and a master's research project. So where did you pin your statement of the problem? So that we see those metaphors evolving through the whole project. So that is an observation. Uh, Martha, Somebody was asking, 
you to go through the journey of the analysis of data. Today, we have the issue of COVID. It has also changed the way we behave, the way we act, bringing on board issues of technology. And yet, we're already aware that technology is driving the way we work and how we do our things now in our workplaces. So I was wondering, with all that bulk of qualitative data, without a software, it must have been problematic. And yet in your book, somewhere, I think it was by error, you mentioned in vivo. So I wanted to know whether you used in vivo or you never used it. Did you smuggle in the aspect of vivo or you know what in vivo is? What is in vivo? Prof, thank you for that. I'm going to work on that one. Uh, then, let's validate the issue, the quality of data kept, 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 kept coming in, and even in methodology. So you have already created one aspect of research assistance, which was an issue. But I want to get one of the slides where you have the Akar Majong writings. Can we have that slide there? I know that. Uh -huh. Now, uh, see, one of the challenges we have with translation, who did the interview? And then, because the, the items, the interview guide was in English, then you get the responses in Akar Majong, and then you've got to translate it back to what? To English. How did you validate to establish that what was said in English is what was said in Akar Majong, and then from Akar Majong to English? That will be my last question, Martha. Doctor, I had the translated instruments attached there in Karamojong, so the situation whereby the participant didn't understand English, we're using actually the translated tools in Karamojong. So who, who translated that tool and how did you still validate it? Because it was English to Karamojong mm. and then somebody must again for to establish that actually what is in Karma Jong is exactly the same what was in English. How did you do that? The same process that I used for validating the instruments in English is the same process I used for validating the other And which ones. process was that? By getting research experts to help me go through the tools based on the objectives of the study. And when like, seven people take the same item, I consider that as a valid uh, instrument, Probably. a valid question. Thank you, Martha. Probably what uh, I'd forgotten about was the book by Myers and Huberman, Analysis of Quotative Data. If you go back to the title again, go to, your to the topic of your... Because that's a relationship title. Mm. And remember, the discussant asked, what is your objective, your research question? What were your findings? Mm. That must match it in the form of a relationship. And then through the discussion, based on the research question's objective, then you discuss it. They have to be tarried. Then from there, of course, you draw your conclusions and then you make recommendations to tie with the objectives or such questions at the end of the day. Now, the only approach that will help you in that was if you used in vivo or you read this book by Myers and Huberman, Analysis of the uh, Qualitative Data. I have the old version 1995. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Professor. Thank you very much, uh, Professor James, for raising those uh, critical issues. Um, Martha, you need to cross-check the growth in the right tab uh, in your thesis, the difference between undergraduate work and uh, PhD is very critical question for you, right from your introduction to every chapter. 
The introductions, I think, have largely remained at undergraduate level. You need to grow and show that growth. Um, Dr. Elizabeth, one or two critical areas. And after that, um, Stephen will also ask one or two critical areas. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, Martha. Um, in your recommendations, everything rotates around us stooping down to what the Karamojong wants. And what the Karamojong wants localizes him or her to own the Karamoja. But we are living in a global village. What will a Karamojong child do when they get out of Karamoja? and they can't speak English, and they can't use a mobile phone, and so on and so forth. In short, why are your recommendations silent about also sensitizing the Koromojo community about the global village and that they are living in a global village? I missed that in your presentation. Secondly, for a very valid reason, I would imagine, like Professor Kagari, I would have loved to see a conceptual framework diagram reflecting IV versus DV, but I want to believe you have a very valid reason for that. You talk about 10 experts having looked at your instruments. You're very silent about these people's expertise. Would you like to talk about these experts who looked at your instruments as far as validity of your instruments is concerned? The data you have given us about the cows, the children love the cows and blah, 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 is absent in your book. The data that is in your book if you go to page, for me, the version that I read, if you go to page five, the children loved writing on slates, on the blackboard, and the drawing pictures. I did not see the cows and the calves that you talked about, and pictures missing the book, but we had them in the presentation. I'm calling out for consistency, Martha, as far as your data presentation is concerned. Chair, I submit. But I would want to hear about the 10 experts okay. and why not also encourage Karamojong to be sensitized because they need to live in the global village. Thank you so much, Doctor. I think I mentioned something about sensitization, but maybe it's minimal. I'm going to look on it and then try to see that I add up that recommendation on my on my in my book. And then the research experts here was talking about uh, the experts in research. And these are some of the lecturers from Chambogo University. Those are actually the people I consider to help me validate these tools. Uh, thank you, Chair. I would want to congratulate Martha for this journey traveled and also want to thank the supervisors that has helped to see her through to this level. Uh, on the first onset, when you look at the first slide as indicated on the, uh, uh, behind you, the math I know is MR. So is this another math or that's the name, that's how the name goes, M-A-R. This is M-A-T-H-A, Martha, Martha. Was it an oversight? No, or that somebody is else coming before us. No, that's the correct name. Okay. Mm. Then, thank you very much. Um, your study in the background is premised on the type of ECD that is funded throughout your talk about funded, funded, funded. 
does it mean that when you went for data correction, even the statement, before I go to that one, even the statement of the problem, we talked about funding and sustainability, whereby when funders move out, say the funding goes as a variable, the program ceases to exist. So does it mean this, that this study was confined to an ECD, ECD program or program that were funded or it was broad open? No, the ECD services in Uganda are still in private hands. So it is the people themselves or well-wishers who actually support ECD activities. How do you find funding? Does it match with the problem statement? Okay, that one we shall proceed. Secondly, I think this was an oversight still, when we are coming to start the presentation, you began as you expressed the privilege to present your findings. I, hope, I was waiting for you to go to chapter four. I think it was not presenting your findings as per se, but was the entire project. Um, another concern, yeah, I think this one has been somehow hinted on, especially by Professor Kagari, but as somebody of educational technology, I would also want to talk about it. I wonder all these lengths, uh, uh, verbatim, whether you involved anything like a recording or you are just handwriting. Thank you, Doctor. I did the recording as well. Then if you did so, if we are taking a recording, there are likely to be some benefits on direct recording and some setbacks when you are correcting data using recording. I wonder where those are captured in the study. I'll look on them, doctor. Okay. Because in most cases, some of these are sophisticated gadgets that are likely to scare the, the participant or respondents. I wonder if, if you came across such. And among, I mean, uh, more to that, when you're going to use them, there should be something I was waiting to see in your appendix. If you consented with the people to whom you, take, you took data, because it's not a matter of say capturing, recording, either video recording, or taking any recorder before they had consented. Lastly, you mentioned having used an interpreter as you I mean, described uh, when you are uh, talking to Dr. To Professor Kagari. Um, I think there is much more to be done here to look at what are some of the likely say, side uh, effects of having taken an interpreter, more so if in cases we are not involved because it, it, there are some challenges which I think could be captured in your study. Chair, yeah, with that I submit. Thank you so much, Doctor. All right, uh, thank you very much, Martha, for the interaction you have had with the examiners. It's good your head is still up. I was looking at you and wondering whether <laughs> you're almost falling down or not, but uh, you are okay. Uh, to the public who have come uh, to witness this, I just want to give chance to two, and uh, please be as brief as you can. If you can ask one critical question and give chance to another, let me see who is ready to ask. I see three hands and all of them are in that direction. So can we give a chance, uh, sister, ask one critical question, Dr. Mani, and then uh, Dr. Wino in that order, if there's nobody here. <laughs> Okay, because by timing, um, we started at uh, half past 10, and uh, within three hours, we should be done with this. Thank you. And probably, if you stand up, your voice will project further. People online don't want to listen to this. Yeah, online, I hear there are people online. So you use the mic so that they are able to. I 
<laughs> no, I'm, I'm not scared of that. I'm like that. Um, okay, Chair, thank you so much. First of all, I would like to thank Martha. Martha, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you for Sister. your defense. Thank you for your answering. Thank you for being there. And I want to thank the supervisors for this fire they have brought you. We are here because of you and the supervisors, Martha, and I want to congratulate them. Thank you so much, Dr. Ju and Dr. Ruvale. Thank you so much, Professor Eju. Um, uh, Martha, most of uh, what I wanted to share with you, they have already done is uh, said it but i wanted to ask you you have done a, you have or, or written about quality indicators and you know that quality indicators are a management system tools hmm? to monitor and to control efficiency of the system and in your case it is ect ece ecd so how is your study going to help the Karamoja region to put in place corrective measures and continuous quality improvement for sustaining ECD program for the caregivers? That is my one question. Question two, among all those quality indicators, which one dominated, which can you say dominated your study? Last but not least, of course, I want, I want to concur with my colleagues that the globe aspect is missing. The critical voice is missing throughout the whole book. I really don't hear your scholar voice in it. Please, you have to refine that. Last but not least, there is a need of consistency in the whole of chapter one. Because if there is no consistency in chapter one, everything is going to go the other side of it and i would have loved to see your conceptual framework i submit chair thank you so much sister uh, the first question is talking about what i would like karamoja actually Uh, sister, I beg your pardon on the first question, but briefly let me answer the second question. The second question uh, is talking about those quality indicators that actually kept on prevailing in my data is actually employing native caregivers in Karamoja. And they are so specific in this because they don't want any other person to go and dilute the culture of the Karamojongs. That's why they are saying they want a native caregiver to be those ones to teach their children. Now the other one is, um, okay, consistency in chapter one. I'm going to closely work with my supervisors. No, the first one. Thank you so much, sister, for that question. I think for that case, it's a high time we listen to the community initiatives as well as sustaining ECE is concerned because their aspirations are actually different from what we want now. For the case of this study, it has actually been able to bring out those different indicators or quality caregiver indicators for the caregivers that they expect. And if we do that, or if we look at these indicators, then we shall be able to 
sustain ECE in Karamoja. Besides that, also look, uh, looking at the early childhood education quality educators as far as the children are concerned, they also have issues there. And what I presented here is what they actually expect their children to be at the end of uh, nursery school. So I am just thinking as a scholar that if probably we follow some of those things, then we shall be able to realize that ECE interventions can be sustained in Karamoja. The issue here is about sustainability because these centers are set up after one month or two years, the centers collapse, leaving the children in a dilemma. And yet we all know that we need to build a firm foundation for children in their early years. Uh, thank you, Madam Martha, for that wonderful presentation. Mine is more of a comment than a question for you to consider. Uh, your title talks of Karamoja region, and we know Karamoja has both urban centers and the rural communities. But your research, your findings, your quotations have a tone of rural setting, rural communities. So possibly in your work, you may have to explain why you are more in the rural areas with those people with the conservative ideas and not the urban setting. You have a Moroto municipality, you have a Kotido, now a municipality or something like that. So in your work, explain why you, you restricted yourself more to rural areas than the uh, urban areas. Perhaps the answer could be uh, most NGOs go to the communities, to the villages than urban centers. And then two, I agree with somebody who said you need to add the scholarly voice in your work. Uh, when the Karamajong say that they want children to study from near their residence, near the Manyatas, do they form critical mass for, for classes? Therefore, in the background, I have not read your work. Are the Manyatas big enough? to justify having classes um, because that's what they want. And perhaps you may have to link up that argument, that is the scholar voice I'm talking about. You may have to link up that argument with the, their desire for the center to have many children. That's what you said. But if they want their centers to have many children, and yet they want children to study from near their residence, near the Manyatas, the two may contradict each other. Near the Manyata, you may not have as many children as they want. So we need your scholarly voice in the, on, on that one. And then finally, you said they, <clears throat> they want their children to come with the siblings. Again, we need your scholarly voice on this. If uh, uh, an ECD child has to be escorted or come with a sibling, who is this sibling? Because this sibling either is supposed to be in school or in the in the gardens or following the, the cattle. So again, you may have to bring in your school voice. Uh, say this is what they want, but honestly, such issues should be considered, as uh, Dr. Pete said, for purposes of bringing them in the global village. Thank you. Uh, Martha, my teacher, thank you for the presentation. Uh, literature really informs your study. And I would like to just give you information that theory maps or guides, guides, your, guides a study. It is most, mainly for quantitative study. But your study is a quantitative study. Why did you first have to identify a theory in this study instead of arriving at the theory from the finding? And that one brings me so that you get more about guaranteed theory. Thank you. Uh, 
Thank you so much, Dr. Wino. I'm going to sit with my supervisors and then we see what we can do for that. As I'm very grateful for that comment. Yeah, thank you, Masa. Uh, mine is uh, about the, you have considered the perspective of the community, but there is a national perspective of early childhood in the country. Of course, we know the purpose of early childhood. Mm -hmm. To me, when you were presenting some of what you were saying were the findings, are instead reinforcing the government perspective that is promoting social skills, creating a health environment. You promote, you said the Karamojongs are uh, after improving on sanitation. Uh, I mean, they want a caregiver who is giving knowledge that promotes uh, good sanitation in the community. Uh, my thinking that you have ended up mixing these things. Now, what is new? I thought you should have disaggregated what you found in the communities that is reinforcing the purpose of early childhood and what is the new endemic or uh, specific for Karamoja that should be recommended that these ones can be incorporated in to promote because we have the uh, is it the UNICEF aims of education, learning to be, learning to do. You find that what the Kromojongus are recommending are within those ones, and they are again specified in the purpose of early childhood. Now, my thinking, can we disaggregate what you found, which is reinforcing what is the purpose of the government, which is the government perspective at national level, because early child is shaped, is going to be shaped, okay, there is a policy, I think, and what does the policy say, and what does the Koromojongs think, beyond what the policy, but the way, the way you are presenting is as if what is coming from Karamoja is new. I sub, I, okay, I seek clarification on that, if I have misgot, I have misunderstood you, thank you. Thank you so much, Professor. Actually, when you look at the data, there are certain indicators that are actually not advocated by the, by the government standards. For example, having the ECD Manyatas, yeah, ECD sites near the Manyatas. Well, some of them are cutting across, but there are some which are actually not cutting across, for example, like that one. That's why I said in the contribution to the study of my study is that it has been able to bring out those contradictions between what we call standard as a government and what the communities in Karamoja call standard. Thank you, Thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you, Martha. Um, just to read through uh, what the online participants are saying, just quickly so that we, we hear their voice, not necessarily to probably answer because many of the questions could be already asked and responded to. So I'll ask uh, Professor Ju to run through. Uh, thank you very much. The, the online uh, participants, uh, some, somebody called Rosemary uh, asked, I have listened to Martha's presentation, but what is the reason for the collapse of all the easy interventions as soon as NGOs leave? Uh, and then another one is from Nabukera Madina. What have you found most interesting aspect of your research? Then somebody called Christopher Isabirie saying, this is my question, dear host. For all I know, 
purely qualitative studies do not necessarily require conceptual frameworks. Why are experts here asking for a conceptual framework? Yet the researchers announced has as a qualitative study. Um, then another person says, now that, I think this Marina again, now that you have completed the research, which part of the process would you say you enjoyed the most and why? Um, then there's another person, another one say, how did doing this research change you as a researcher? How did this study uh, done, I think, design work in practice? Since this is a collective study, how did you establish the limits around the scope of your data collection? So. Okay, so uh, it would be unfair if we hear the voice of the online participants because uh, this is a blended uh, uh, approach uh, to this presentation. So, Martha, you have heard, and uh, some of the areas are very important for you as a qualitative researcher because uh, uh, Dr. Lydia did that uh, you are part and parcel of the research in a qualitative process. So the question, how did it change you as a qualitative researcher, I think is critical for you. And uh, many of the issues I think are coming because you do not explain those issues in your book. So qualitative research is about thick data presentation. You, you really must labor to present your data in such a manner that you do not leave gaps uh, for questions. Uh, you may want to comment on one or two, but uh, I think a lot of those issues which we are raised have been answered. But again, just one critical question, which crowns everything. What is that one sentence statement you're trying to defend? From your intro, chapter one up to chapter five, what are you defending in this thesis? Just one statement, your thesis statement. Uh, thank you so much, Professor. What I'm trying to defend in this study is uh, how ECE can be sustained in Karamoja. <laughs> yes, being I want to thank them so much for their some of them had, have given me compliments. And uh, some of the questions they have asked, I think, have been actually answered. Yes, I want to thank them so much for their questions. And to the audience, thank you so much for coming. Not forgetting my supervisor, thank you so much for the hard work. Thank you for traveling the journey with me. The panel, thank you for the excellent work that you have done. I've taken note of this and I'm going to work hand in hand with my supervisors and I promise you I'm going to deliver a very good book. Thank you okay. so much and God bless. Thank you very much Martha for that promise and I will look forward to that. Uh, I'll now request the public and uh, the candidate to move to serve I don't know whether this is break tea or lunch, I don't know, but we can do both to serve that lunch uh, so that the examiners uh, convene. However, we'll begin with the examiners. I think they are dead exhausted. <laughs>